Good morning, everyone. So, let's talk about message cues. This is a very, very, very useful concept to know about when you're working at scale. And I would argue that it's actually... It's probably one of the most important things to know in order to do microservices in... A, I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but I, ha, I, I would like to make the argument that this is probably the most useful tip that I've ever gotten when it comes to running something at scale. And it's actually not my own, my own thoughts or ideas, but I will relay them to you, relay them, relay them to you anyway because I think it's such a great tip. So I was watching this tech talk, this is quite a few years back, by one of the representatives from Heroku. And this was when the microservices boom kind of went through the roof and everybody did microservices. And today it's, uh, I'm not saying it's standard practice, but it is fairly, fairly like people, it's an accepted way of solving applications at scale like people do their own microservices and we still are fighting about the exact definition of a microservice but ba just to give you a basic understanding it's just a small application that runs one part of your system right and th that th it's nothing more complicated than that instead of having one massive application you have several small applications that do different parts of the system now one of the biggest problems when you are dealing with all these different con containers or different small applications is intercommunication and the Hero guy from Heroku said that and i i completely agree this uh, with this i actually built my own system for my own startup this way he said that the way they have found at Heroku that the people who make microservices work and have an easy, the easiest time to deal with that type of infrastructure are the ones who are using a message bus or a message queue. And so basically what they do is that they, all these tiny applications hook up to the message queue. They just directly communicate with the message queue and the message queue is responsible for handling communications between each container that way they can actually talk to each container can actually just broadcast out to all the other containers in a very effective in a very easy manner that you know something happened or like and then the others can respond to it and that's exactly what a message queue, queue is for a message queue is a application that allows you to send a message just like you would like a you know an Think of it as an email or something, but you basically just send some data to the message queue. It's a separate application that will have a small, like a small storage system, and most of it is going to live in memory. But basically, all it does is it takes in the message and then sends it to a channel or sends it to a bunch of other whoever is listening on that message can receive it. And the beauty of this is that this makes it very, very easy to scale really, really large systems. It's useful in two scenarios. Now, you can, as you may have suspected, you can actually have it do things in real time. Like, you know, of course, if you, if you, have, a, if you have a message queue between one application who wants to talk to another application, that is not going to be as fast as just talking directly to that application. But it's going to be more robust because if for any reason one of the applications, let's say that application A sends a message to the message queue and then application B isn't ready for receiving, like maybe it's under a lot of load. If you have that message queue, the message queue will hold that message until application B is ready to receive it. So that gives it a little bit of robustness in, you know, at the cost of a small delay. And if you were just to send it directly, odds are that the message would, you know, not actually arrive because application B is under such stress. So that's the that's the kind of beauty and power of message queues where you can, in essence, reduce the load in, in exchange for a little bit of a delay in computation on most systems. So... A good example of when this is a very useful thing is to trigger different events. Let's say that you have a you have a emailing service which is responsible for sending out an email. 
So your main application gets a, like your user signs into your main application and it, the user inputs its, their credentials and now they want to have you know, a verification email sent to them so that they can verify their password. That would be very, in, uh, well not very, but this is a very useful situation for a message queue because if let's say that you have a lot of people subscribing, you have a lot of people basically signing up and you know triggering these emails. So having that happening in real time is a little bit ineffective because that's you know you're going to spend all your time basically creating emails and sending them out so it's very effective for you to kind of reduce the load for your system by simply having a message queue you send a message saying that hey this person is going to need an email send it to the queue and on the other side of things is the emailing service who just waits for things to come into the queue and it can pull things off as fast as it can work because the message like the emailing service is going to have to work a lot because you know it's it's a heavy operation if you will to create html emails and like in theory it's a heavy operation it's the same thing with say thumbnails let's say that you have a image service that's responsible for grabbing uploaded images and creating thumbnails that's also a perfect example of where you want some type of uh queue system or some type of watcher that watches when something happens so that you can actually respond to it when you when the application is ready or the service is ready to deal with it because you can't just deal with everything that's coming in because you know the service is going to work very very hard to keep up so a message system is uh, i think it's a really useful thing it's really useful to know about it the two ones that i've been using for the most is rabbit mq and active mq you can check those out and as i said there it's nothing really fancy about it most languages have an integration for for them think of them as a very very lightweight database where you just send a message it can be anything and then whoever wants to know about it just subscribes to that event and they get notified to it about it so that that's basically what a message queue is and when you want to ask yourself when am i supposed to use a message queue it's useful to have in order for a lot of services to talk to each other if you have a lot of microservices to get them to talk effectively with each other this is a very useful very very cool way of doing that and it's also a very good way of notifying hard-working services that do a lot of computation power like thumbnail generators or email services and so forth that hey we have some requests here can you just do that job whenever you have time basically that's how a message queue should in my opinion be used